Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Do you want to build a brand new computer but you don't have a lot of money? How about $300? You've come to the right place. This is the new Coffee Lake based Pentium G5400, a new 300 series H310 motherboard, 8 gigs of DDR4 RAM, a 250 gig solid state boot drive for wicked fast performance, a 450 watt power supply, and a mini tower case, all for $300. If you don't want to buy used, if you don't want to put together an older system and you want the newest technology, you want NVMe support, upgradability to newer, faster CPUs, you want to avoid Spectre and Meltdown issues, and you simply want to just get into a new platform for not a lot of money, this is for you. Everything discussed in today's video, from the new options I'm showing you here to some used options I'll show you later in the video, will be linked down in the description to Amazon, Newegg, and to eBay. Those are affiliate links. They do support the channel. If you find this video helpful, useful, and informative, please use those when shopping. I'd be greatly appreciative. Further down in the video description will be Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. We have a wonderful Discord that you should totally join. We've got a very friendly community. There's a tech help section. There's a gaming section. There's a deal section. So come join us on Discord if you'd like to further discuss these options in a more interactive environment. Today's video is all about the pros and cons of a build like this, optional changes you could make to it, what graphics cards that install to it, and what your other choices besides this whole platform you might want to consider if you're putting together a budget machine in the middle of 2018. Future videos on this build will have game performance, full screen, live gameplay, not just built-in benchmarks, Overwatch, League of Legends, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Rainbow Six Siege, perhaps a couple of others. Those are the kind of games that are meant to be played on a CPU like this. Far Cry 5? Ghost Recon Wildlands, Assassin's Creed Origins, no, not at all. This is completely the wrong platform if those kind of games are what you want to play. Want some Overwatch fun? Want some League? This actually will do that quite well. As nice as this CPU is, the reality is the integrated graphics are pretty poor. If you really want to have decent frame rates, high details, 1080p gaming, you're going to want to put a graphics card in here. The nice thing is you can start out with the CPU and add a graphics card later, perhaps when the prices drop a bit. These are the two graphics cards I would consider for the CPU, the $90 GT 1030 and the $140 GTX 1050. In reality, the better deal for the money is the GTX 1050, but if you're spending $140 on a graphics card, you turn this build into a $440 machine. So I suspect a lot of people will consider going with the GT 1030. You possibly could go with a used graphics card, but the whole point of building this is to get a new machine. If you're going with a used graphics card, there are used computers to consider as well. When I do the game performance videos, I will compare the integrated graphics to at least one of these, depending upon the game. Two graphics cards I will not be testing here are the GT710 and GT730. I have covered these in the past and they do serve a purpose, or at least the GT710 does at this point. The 730 doesn't serve any purpose. The 710 is no faster than the integrated graphics on the new Coffee Lake CPUs. And frankly, the GT730 is not fast enough over it to make any trouble worth bothering with. If you're going to put in a dedicated graphics card, the lowest new card that I would put in is the GT1030. Now, the 710 serves a purpose in older machines. If you have an i5-2400, for example, and you need more modern support, it's an inexpensive card. It provides you video in older machines. But for a new build, there's no purpose whatsoever, so we will not be testing these. You might be asking, that's a bunch of NVIDIA cards. What about AMD? We will not be putting an RX 560 in here. Why? Two reasons. Number one, on balance, in most games, it's a little bit slower than a GTX 1050, and it costs $20 more, or at least it does today. Now, in the past, that's been different, and if this were $20 less than a GTX 1050, I'd be all over it. We'd be testing one for sure, but slightly slower and slightly more expensive, and it uses more power than a GTX 1050, yeah, what's the point? Now, some people are going to say, well, it supports FreeSync. Yes, it does, but at this level of gaming, do you care, and are you buying a FreeSync monitor? And if you've got that kind of money, yeah, okay, they're inexpensive, they're not too bad. You're probably building a nicer machine, probably a Ryzen-based machine, so we're not going to be testing this either. That brings us to CPU choice. Pentium G5400, two cores, four threads, 3.7 gigahertz. Nice, except all this exists, so let's talk about that for a minute. Four cores, four threads, and four cores, four threads. i3-8100, Ryzen 3 2200G. 
Now, yes, this has four threads, and some people hear that and go, well, they all have four threads, so they're really kind of the same, right? Not even close. Two processing cores. Yes, it can schedule four things at once. Yes, it's smoother than the old Pentium G4400, which only had two threads, but do not confuse it for a four-core processor. It is, in fact, just two cores. It does run at 3.7, which is nice, but compared to an i3-8100, which runs at 3.6, ironically enough, but it's still monstrously faster, with four true processing cores, anytime you go over two core usage, it is demonstrably faster than the Pentium G is. But it costs more, about $50 more expensive. It takes our $300 budget build and turns it into a $350 budget build. Is it worth it? Well, on the surface, yes, it probably would be, if this didn't exist. This is essentially a rebranded i5-7400 from the previous generation, minus the turbo, but with a higher base. Four cores, four threads is what i5s have been for a long, long time. The fact that this is 120, yay, victory, we finally have $120 four core, four thread chips from Intel because of Ryzen. The problem with this, and the reason why I wouldn't recommend it, is simply because Ryzen 3 2200G is four cores, four threads, 3.5 base, 3.7 turbo, better included stock cooler, much better included graphics, $99. $20 less expensive than this, basically the same speed, plus or minus 5%, close enough it doesn't make any difference, 250% faster graphics. It's not quite as fast as that NVIDIA GT 1030, but it's within 80% of it, give or take. Blows away Intel integrated graphics, not even close less expensive, installs on cheap motherboards. It really is worth considering. In fact, this entire build would be worth considering doing as a Ryzen 3 2200G. I've done that on my channel, the $400 build with a nicer case and a few nicer components. If you want to stay close to the $300 price point, swap out the CPUs, you're looking at a $30 price increase. Swap out the motherboard, you're looking at almost no price increase. A B350 board you can find in the $70 price range, so they're really, really close in price. So why am I not doing another one of those builds? Because I've done one already. That's linked down below. We're doing the Pentium G5400 instead. So you might ask the question, who should build this 300R machine with the Pentium G? Nobody. Uh, to be completely blunt with you, I wouldn't. I wouldn't build this. And it might seem odd for me to be sitting here doing a build, talking about all these parts and say, yeah, this is kind of silly. But it is kind of silly. And I have to be honest with you guys. $30 price difference to go from bad integrated graphics to good integrated graphics, to go from two cores, four threads, to four cores, four threads, to go to, yes, it's an upgradable platform. Yes, an i7-8700K can be installed on that. Not overclocked, but it can be. Here's the problem. The B350 motherboard has three more years of upgrades in front of it. Zen 2, Zen 3 will be installable on it all the way through 2020. Basically, the current 8th generation chips is all you can count on being able to install on that H310 board. Maybe a couple of 9th gen chips might work, but that's it. Intel changes the socket and the chipset either every year or every other year, so there's really no future beyond faster versions of the current generation chips. You could put a Ryzen 3 2200G on a B350 board, wait two or three years, and then put a third or fourth gen Ryzen on that same board with BIOS updates without having to upgrade your board, without having to replace your RAM. There's a lot of benefit to that. Up through about 2020 is what AMD has promised. I did talk about this in extensive detail during the Ryzen APU launch, during the full Ryzen second generation launch. I won't repeat that entire point here. What I will say is that if you want a premium top of the line machine, Intel does make the fastest gaming CPU in the world, the i7-8700K. Overclock it to five gigahertz and it will run games faster than Ryzen will. But that's for a premium top of the line, two plus thousand dollar super gaming rig. We're doing a video on a 300R gaming rig, completely apples and oranges. Pentium G5400 versus the Ryzen 3 2200G yeah, I mean, I really hate to say this, but I'm going to put this together and I'm going to produce benchmark results and I'm going to show it to you. And the entire time I'm basically saying, go build my Ryzen 3 build because it's a better deal. 
The only reason that build was 400 is because I had a nicer case, a Cooler Master case, I had a nicer power supply and a few other nicer parts in it, which push, pushed the price point up just a little bit. The only other comment that I'll make is you notice that I have a single memory module right here, single channel RAM. If you're using integrated graphics, be it uh, Intel or be it AMD, get dual channel. It is five to $10 more and thus technically breaks the $300 price point. To get this to 300, I had to go with a single eight gig stick because it's like $10 more for two eight gig sticks. But it is a $300 build with one. But if you're gaming, get dual channel RAM, two four uh, gigabyte modules. For non-gaming use, if you're putting this together for a web browsing, Facebook, YouTube watching video machine, single channel RAM is fine. It doesn't matter for that. It only matters for gaming. A quick note about keyboards, mice, and Windows 10. First of all, Windows 10 is not included in the $300 price because some people A, already have a copy, B, run Windows 7, C, run Linux, or D, just don't care. However, if you would like to buy a copy of Windows 10 Professional OEM, which is good on one machine, there'll be a link down in the video description below to SCD Key, which I've done a previous video about, or rather Fem has, and for $12.60 after the exclusive Tech Deals discount code, you can get yourself a license key which will activate online and give you a fully licensed copy. Now, as far as keyboards and mice go, this is a simple $20 option for a wireless keyboard and mouse from Logitech. It is a basic one, it's not gaming or fancy, but if you just need a keyboard mouse and perhaps want the features of wireless, for $20, this will certainly get you going. But keyboards and mice are very personal, so I don't include them in the build because there's just an endless variety of options there, but you can start here if you want something cheap that will last you for many years. Now all this talk of new CPU choices is wonderful, but it is tempered by the existence of this. Now I've covered this many times before. This is a Dell Optiplex. You can find these very inexpensively on eBay. Generally a second, third, or fourth generation i5 starts at $100 and goes up to about $200, $250 depending upon what hardware is in them. i5-2400 i5-3450, i5-4440, and i5-4460 are the CPUs that you're looking for. Those are the four core, four thread chips, mid-range from the second to fourth generation refresh. And if you look at one of these in the mid-range in the $150 to $170 range, you'll typically find eight gigs of RAM, a 500 gig hard drive, one of those CPUs, and either Windows 7 Professional or Windows 10 Professional included. They usually have their certificate of authenticity right on here. You can use that to reinstall if you need to. Optical drives, USB ports, the whole nine yards. Now, let me offer some math for you. Let's say you spend 170 for a good example of one of these with eight gigs of RAM and some mid-level hard drive. Fair enough. Spend $90 on a GT 1030 graphics card. Spend $35 on a 120 gig SSD. Put that in here, do a fresh install of Windows 10. I wouldn't trust any used copy of Windows 10 that comes on these anyway. So do a clean install of that, use the hard drive for additional storage. And when you add those together, you come up to about $300. For $300, you'll have four cores, four threads, at least 3.1 gigahertz, because the i5-2400 was a 3.1 gigahertz chip. And you'll have good enough per core performance. On a per core basis, it's not as fast as say the Pentium G5400, but you have four true processing cores. And much better graphics. The GT 1030 is going is 250 to 300% faster than the integrated graphics on the Pentium G5400 for $300 that you don't have to build. That makes it an interesting option versus the $300 build that we're looking at today. Spend about $50 more, $350, put a GTX 1050 in here, and you'll have monstrously faster performance. I mean, you're looking at dramatically faster performance than even the GT 1030. I've done videos on this deal multiple times on my channel. I will link to those and link to eBay down in the description below. For all this talk of new PCs, if you don't mind a used PC, consider this. Now my recommendation, those links below will take you to the various generations of machines. Look at the sellers. My basic recommendation is buy from sellers that have at least 1,000 feedback and that have at least 99% positive feedback. There are exceptions and it's up to you, but some of the companies that sell these refurbished on eBay have tens of thousands of positive feedback. They're top plus rated sellers. They have 99.9 .9 or 99.8% positive feedback. They're real companies with real offices and they do these by the thousands. So 
it's just as safe buying from them, frankly, as anybody else. I've done that before. That's where this came from. I didn't buy this new. I bought this off of eBay. I bought several of them off of eBay. If you don't mind used, it's a good choice. The Pentium G5400 and what I've described here today is largely for people who go, yeah, I just don't want used. I want new. I want the modern platform. I want to be sure I don't have Spectra meltdown issues. I want to make sure I have NVMe support, which is silly for this chip, but maybe you want it. Maybe you want to upgrade to a, an 8700 or 8700K. Fair enough. I'm just presenting the alternative options to give you something to think about. With all those options out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here because it's long enough as it is. Everything I've discussed here from the used machines to the CPUs to this build will all be linked down in the description below to Amazon and Newegg. Please check the various prices at the different stores. Consider your options. Post your questions and comments down in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know which of the three choices I presented here. Pentium G5400, Ryzen 3 2200G, or a used Dell Optiplex or one of the other brands off of eBay you think is the best deal. And then look forward to an upcoming video where I actually put this computer to together and do some tests on it to compare it to those other two choices. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with a big huge red button directly below, questions and comments down below, links in the video description. They are affiliate links, they do support the channel. If you found this interesting, helpful, useful, informative, or just entertaining, please consider using those when shopping. I'd greatly appreciate it. Links to Twitch, Twitter, Discord, Floatplane, and a bunch of other things will be down in the description below. Go check it out if you haven't looked at my video descriptions lately. The base has been updated. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.